Today, we will be joined by 40 world leaders invited by President Biden, and we will underscore the urgency and the economic benefits of stronger climate action. Thank you all for coming, and let's now welcome President Joe Biden. Good evening, and uh, I, 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 today, and I'll give everyone We are currently in the middle of a climate crisis and the sixth mass extinction that threatens billions of lives on Earth. There will be no tomorrow if we keep doing empty summits and giving empty promises. Divesting from dirty industry sectors, leading a green and just transition towards renewable energy, stopping deforestation, listening and actively involving those from most affected people and area, protecting our environmental defenders. All these measures should be taken immediately and all sectors must work together in harmony for a safer present and a more habitable future. We are running out of time. The time to act is now. Assume, assume you don't have more technical difficulties. While President Biden has gathered 40 heads of state to decide our future, we have gathered activists from around the world to speak the truth that these leaders are not saying. Leaders continue to find ways around their promises. They pick and choose what they want to hear, but soon they will not be able to choose. The less action we take only leads deeper into the crisis. Comfort is temporary and the consequences will not be comfortable. It is the same leaders that are meeting at this leader summit that can enjoy that temporary comfort because to them, it's a hypothetical situation, not a reality. It's our reality. We are and will be at the front lines of the crisis. The real leaders are the activists in the street, not the ones signing fancy documents. So President Biden and leaders of the world, we need you to start listening to the people. You can't be a climate president if you still meet with fossil fuel companies and do the bare minimum of what you claim is climate action. To regain credibility and demonstrate true climate leadership, President Biden, you need to make good on your commitments to climate action and environmental justice. You need to be bold now and deliver climate action that matches the scale of this crisis. The climate challenge must be addressed in a manner consistent with human rights, environmental justice, and democratic organizing people. This is not only a global crisis, but a systemic one. Collaboration and honesty is going to be the systemic change that we need in order to solve the climate crisis. We don't expect you to solve this crisis single-handedly. We expect you to listen to the science, work through your empty promises, and start making real change now. We're so sorry, uh, we don't know what happened, but our, our tech team is managing the situation, so. Uh, we will now hear from Chancellor Angela Merkel. Uh, we're having some technical issues. Can we just... Climate change is the greatest threat facing our lives right now. With the rising global temperatures, we are seeing changes in weather patterns. We are receiving heavier and shorter rainy seasons and longer and hotter dry seasons. This means that some parts of our countries are experiencing extreme rainfall, causing devastating floods, as others are suffering with withering droughts. The climate crisis is not something that is coming in the future. It is something that is happening right now. We are seeing the impacts right now. This is why we want the leaders to take real action, to listen to the science, to face the climate emergency and rise up for the people and the planet. Thank you. As with all countries are invited, this is the opportunity for all invited countries to step up with their commitments that will close the mitigation gap and keep the 1.5 temperature goal within reach. Therefore, Germany needs to present a plan for the next five years to stay in line with the Paris Agreement. There's no more time to talk about 2050, 2030, when you don't even have a plan for the next five years. And this plan needs to focus on the equity aspect. This plan needs to <clears throat> include that we will drop out of fossil fuels right now and that we will end all subsidies <clears throat> to stop the funding of the destruction in the global south. We need to show that we have understood that we need to change the system and therefore we can't plant trees in other parts of the world just to keep our lifestyle here in the global north, here in Germany. We will use this key moment, we need to use this key moment to discuss the climate crisis and shape the expectations for the sequence of the events in this coming year. 
Germany pretends that they have understood that global warming of 1.2 degrees is already hell for so many people in different parts of the world, but they definitely didn't, otherwise they would have taken the measures based on the experience of the most affected people in most affected areas. We need to stop comparing our climate policy to other countries' policy. We need to start comparing our climate policy with science science from the IPCC report. We need to change our current system to keep global heating below 1.5 degrees. This new system can't be built by the same elite colonizers who are leading our current destruction. Therefore, the most marginalized people have to be the people in power, making sure that the past systematic problems won't be repeated. I, uh, every, uh, everything is being handled, so, uh, I will now pass it on to President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Distinguished heads of state and government of, of, of. Turkish President Erdogan is one of the 40 leaders to be invited to the Biden summit, but we are the only country that has not ratified the Paris Treaty yet. This brings a burden on us climate activists to put pressure since we have no benchmark to act upon. To list a few main ecological breakdowns in my country, there are nuclear plants being built while coal-powered thermal plants are still in use and there are plans to build more. Many people are suffering pulmonary diseases due to the pollution. We are also facing drought due to mismanagement of water. The building of an artificial waterway has commenced to bypass the Bosphorus, which will not only cause seawater to mix with lakes that feed the uh, cities drinking water, but also deforestation and extinction of marine life. These are just a few examples of problems, but not limited to that we are facing in Turkey. The Biden summit would be the ideal place for Belgium to introduce new climate ambitions, but Belgium will not be taking part. The Global North has a huge responsibility to make sure that climate justice is understood. Then key continents like Asia and America will do the same. Our Prime Minister, Alexandre Kiro, needs to realize that our society is ready for change, even though he says we are not. The climate crisis increases social injustice. We need people in power who communicate that fighting this crisis will decrease inequity. We need to fight this crisis as an intersectional fight that has structural issues, like racism, sexism, colonialism. Involving intersectional perspectives will make sure system change is possible. Tell the people the truth, not what you think they want to hear, but tell them what they need to hear. We demand no more empty summits, no more empty promises. We demand action, we demand change. As an Algerian representative, I feel the urge to make a change as my country is in climate danger. As day by day goes on, the climate crisis is not going to wait for us to wake up. It's not waiting for tomorrow. We need to lower the global temperature and fight for under 1.5 degrees. We need to work together in harmony to make a change to the environment. What is happening to the climate? Many other aspects of global climate are changing as well. High temperatures extremes and heavy precipitation events are increasing. Seas are retreating, warming, rising and becoming more acidic and flooding is becoming more frequent amongst every country. When are our global leaders going to understand that not only large popular countries are affected by climate change? MAPA, most affected people and areas, need to be heard. We need a change, now or never. No more empty promises and no more telling us. We will change because we need a change. Right now, across Africa, people and animals are dying. Forests cut down in a snap and land stolen from the rightful owners, the indigenous people, all in the name of investments. So what are our leaders doing about this? Well, they're just organizing some fancy meetings and submits to come up with more empty promises and net zero greenwashing tactics, which are obviously a lie. We are the ones experiencing the storms, droughts and floods. Yet we are always underrepresented as we have people from the global north telling our stories and making decisions for us. We deserve to be heard. We deserve a seat at the decision table. I mean, these people never understand what it's like to walk hours to collect clean drinking water. We don't want you to pity us. We need real action from you. <laughs>
Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. In, in, in today, I am not only speaking for myself. I am speaking for all those voices that continue to fight for calmly justice, and especially for those who have given their life being killed to protect the environment. Climate change is already a reality. The average global surface temperature of the Earth has risen almost one degree since the middle of the last century because of excess greenhouse gases, which is damaging both our ecosystem and our ways of life. We need both our leaders and civil society to articulate action for the benefit of humanity. Any positive action, whether small or large, will have an impact on the world. We still have time to avoid major catastrophes and we need climate justice, environmental education and above all we need climate action now. The climate crisis is a human right crisis. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says that he is a climate leader. But climate leaders don't buy pipeline, nor do they disregard indigenous people's voices against these projects or the disasters that come along with it. Climate leaders act on their promises and implement good climate policies that will save our future. Canada's winters are getting warmer and shorter, areas near water bodies are sinking and eroding, but still. We in the global north have yet to see the worst of it. We need a just recovery from COVID-19, one that centers uplifting marginalized groups and a transition away from fossil fuels on non renewable energy. Climate justice policies are the solution, not carbon taxes and offsets. We are not on track to reach our Paris Agreement goals, and yet, even if we do, they will not save us. Only radical and worthwhile climate action will. The United States is posing as a leader in climate by getting all the other big polluters and a few of the most affected in a Zoom call. But we should never forget its historic role in causing our climate catastrophe today. My country has experienced the brunt of the climate crisis, facing four typhoons in the span of a single month last year in 2020, and just a few days ago, the strongest typhoon to ever be recorded in the month of April. Countries like the U.S., China and others in the global north are rich because they have stolen and continue to steal natural resources from places like the Philippines with their mining, logging and fishing corporations, cutting down the forests and flattening the mountains that are practically our only defenses against climate change. Our national and world leaders are content with words and promises, but we will not buy into their false hope. We will instead, through any means necessary, create our own hope, because the true climate leadership will not be found in the elite few but in the people, on the streets, in the front lines of the crisis. If you do not act now on your emissions and follow through concretely with your plans, we are coming for you. What is said is not the point. What matters is what comes to reality afterwards. The Hungarian government is misleading people of your nation with baseless promises while holding back the efforts of the international community as well. For example, when in 2019 it first vetoed the EU's goal to become carbon neutral by 2050. Our country doesn't even have an environmental ministry. This fact also proves that our future still isn't taken into consideration in decision-making. The economical goals continue to support endless rivalry. However, the crisis that we are facing is a global challenge which affects all of us, and we all have to take part in combating it. There's a metaphor which says this is a global game where only the outcome matters. It could seem as if our leaders were playing with puppets. But it's important that in reality this isn't a game and is a question of life and death. We expect our leaders to listen to the science and use the already existing solutions and push for new ones to fight the climate and environmental crisis regionally and globally. We demand that our future and the most affected people's lives are considered in making decisions. Thank you. It's more than time for everybody to start treating the climate crisis as a crisis. While it doesn't happen, insufficient policies that can be easily cheated on will continue to be adopted to pretend global leaders are doing enough. We need the media to start showing the truth and how the interests of the fossil fuel industry, multinational CEOs and politicians are destroying our planet in a vicious cycle where they extract our future and our present from nature pollute to get more money and use the same money to silence people, bribe experts and keep destroying our home. 
Here in Brazil, since Bolsonaro and our environment minister, Ricardo Salles, reduced our NDC's goals, they can't really say their net zero pledges are full of loopholes, just like other leaders worldwide. Instead, Bolsonaro decided to say he's going for zero destruction of the Amazon by 2030, and this happened exactly on the eve of the Biden summit. It may sound something at first, but it's actually very easy to end deforestation by 2030 if you destroy everything by 2029. If you are serious about climate and social justice, you must not make deals with Bolsonaro. You'll be funding the destruction of our people and our ecosystems. What we need is global leaders to start working on climate justice for real and see the climate crisis as the crisis it is. We are done with your empty promises. You are having another chance to prove you are worried about people and nature, but time is running out. Up next is President Alberto Fernandez. Se sabe de la crisis climática hace más de 40 años, cuando a mí me quedaban 20 años por nacer. 40 años en donde uno se espera que se hayan tomado todas las medidas necesarias para frenar esta crisis. Pero no, en los últimos 40 años se emitieron más gases de efecto invernadero que en toda la historia de la humanidad. La desigualdad tanto de género como económica y entre países del sur y norte global son el corazón de la crisis climática. Y este criterio sobre que existe una deuda ecológica histórica del norte para con el sur global no puede quedar afuera a la hora de pensar la solución. De las decisiones que tomen en los próximos años nos llevará a un mundo más justo y ambientalmente más sostenible o lo contrario. Uno, en donde las desigualdades se exacerben aún más y sea imposible vivir con un piso mínimo de derechos. Nuestros ojos están en ustedes. La crisis climática ha estado afectando a las personas de todo el mundo por mucho tiempo, desde tifones en Asia, hasta droughts y floods en África. Las personas en la línea de frente deben ser escuchadas, como las que están viendo la crisis directamente. Como mi país, una ciudad de mi país, una ciudad mesmerizante llamada Alexandria, que se piensa en menos de 50 años. Even millions of people. It is the reality of many countries around the world. It's a global emergency, so let's treat it as a crisis. The climate emergency requires action more than words. In the last decade, world leaders have been making promises, yet there is no climate action being taken. We are at the point of no return. So let's put the people and the planet over profit now as there is no planet B. Science tells us that we need to cut 50% of greenhouse gases global emissions until 2030. Not doing this means destroying the physical conditions that have allowed for human civilization and it means closing our eyes to climate injustice. The climate crisis is a handover of exploitation and colonialism and it puts the ones that have least contributed to it at the very front line. We must never forget that climate justice is also social justice and that the global north must own up to its historical ecological depth. The society in which we live in has structural discrimination, so any crisis will disproportionately affect those who are already discriminated against. This system isn't broken. It was built to be unfair. Leaders worldwide have been proposedly failing to treat the climate crisis as a crisis for decades now. Instead, an illusion of climate action was created while decisive steps were delayed and greenhouse gas emissions were allowed to continue rising. It is not possible to continue pretending that it will be with small resolutions and empty promises that we move forward, but with concrete action and profound change built socially to respond to this unparalleled problem. We are watching you. You can sit in closed summits, but you will never hide the truth. You can act as if nothing happens, but you can't lie to the people who are facing the truth. Climate crisis is the reality we live. Right here and right now, we are those who are struggling. Most affected people shall have their problems raised and their voices heard. Your lies are killing us. Action for ju climate justice is the only we demand. Well, folks, I have no idea who's up next, so let's find out. Today, I speak for the fifth most vulnerable country to be affected by climate change while contributing least to it, Pakistan. Today, I speak for every country, for every human, because no one is immune from the consequences of climate change. We have seen how millions of people lost their life to climate-induced disasters. We also know that sea levels are rising, forests are burning, Arctic is melting, and what not. And as the consequences of climate change reach the irreversible heights, it is time for action. But action, not empty promises and empty summits. As the leaders of the 40 countries are meeting at this summit, we want them to discuss the real issues. 
We want them to talk how the actual climate leaders and youth must be made part of the policy making decisions. We want them to discuss about climate education. We want them to implement polluters based principle in each and every individual that has affected environmental resources in one way or another. First and foremost, we want action, not promises, because climate crisis is here and also to remember that nature has a sterner sense of justice than we all do. Thank you. As part of the European Union, we have an historical responsibility to start the transition towards a sustainable world. Therefore, we will cut at least 80% of our emissions by 2030 using the Next Generation Recovery Fund. We weren't prepared to face the pandemic and we were severely affected by it. But we learned the lesson and we will treat every crisis like a crisis from now on. By 2050, we will reach our zero emission target with no loopholes because we all know that net zero is not zero. And we will do it in the only possible way, by changing the system that brought us to this crisis, protecting workers, farmers and vulnerable people in our country and across the world. For this reason, we will also stop cooperating and trading with countries that violate human rights and climate justice, withdrawing from every unjust treaty we are currently part of. And this is not starting tomorrow, this is happening today, because there is no time to lose and we have to face the climate emergency, whatever it takes. It's good that the president is concerned about climate crisis and he wants to talk about this. Uh, but as a FFF and MAP activist, we have seen this type of uh, conferences, this type of summits, uh, many before. We really do not want any empty promises, any empty summits. We do not believe in empty talks or something like that. We are in the streets, we know what the situation is and we know that if there is no immediate action, this planet is really going to die. So we want our leaders to act responsible, to act and to listen to the science and that's all. Thank you. Joe Biden did not invite many of the most affected by climate change to his climate summit even though their input is necessary to efficiently combat the climate change we are experiencing right now. Instead, he invited those with the least interest in actually solving the issue and who have proven inefficient in fighting the problems at hand. We don't need any more empty promises. We don't need another occasion for financially well-off governments to greenwash their inefficient efforts in dealing with a crisis that, while they may not experience, directly and severely just yet, already affects many people all around the globe. We need to listen to the science and we need to listen to the voices of the historically suppressed communities. Only then can we create an environmentally and socially sustainable and fair system to combat this unprecedented crisis. Over the past few years, or better yet, decades, we've been lying to you and denying the actual extent of the threat the climate crisis poses. We cannot lie to you, but also ourselves, any longer. Each year, we are getting closer to a global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Millions of people from the most affected communities and areas are already losing their homes and lives because of the current socio-economic system, and us, the people who support it. We really need to, pardon my language here, get our shit together. The situation is out of control and the only thing giving us a chance at survival is immediate action. Together we need to build a better world and it all starts with a just economy that meets the needs of all people within the limits of nature. You know, I have to say, this is actually quite a lineup. I mean, you have to give it to them, they're saying what needs to be said. And I do appreciate when people speak the truth instead of just saying what they think others want to hear. Kinda want to hear what they have to say. As Africans, we suffer the consequences of this crisis on a daily basis. And we have started asking questions. Don't we have leaders anymore? Where are the people that colonized us? Where are the colonial masters that want the best for us as a continent? It's time you rise and start taking actions.
to save Africans from the effects of climate change. We no longer want empty promises. The era of empty promises has come and gone. This is the time for actions, positive actions. Remember, you signed the Paris Accord. As I'm speaking today, the world is 1.2 degrees warmer considering the pre-industrial levels. The CO2 concentration has reached its highest point since the birth of our civilizations and even beyond. Each day of delayed climate action, each summit filled with empty promises, threatens the livelihoods of communities fighting on the front line today and threatens our species as a whole. The climate crisis is a structural problem. In order to tackle this crisis, we do not only need to change our entire economies, our way of producing electricity, our way of traveling, etc. We need to change the core foundations on which we based our societies in order for it to actually serve the people and the planet. This revolutionary change may seem like an impossible task. This, what seems impossible t today, could have been possible 20 years ago, if the elite, those in charge, acted then. You failed those who are already most impacted by this crisis, but you still have the chance to prevent the worst. World leaders, do not leave your negotiations until you agree on a scientific and just target that would take into account your historical contribution to this crisis. President Biden, do not end this summit with empty promises. Fight for 1.5, fight for the planet, fight for humanity. Our planet is burning up and our authorities and world leaders are not doing anything about it. This is the sixth mass extinction happening right before our eyes and it is humans that are next. We are ruining our home. There is no planet B. It is not a joke anymore. We need to take action immediately to reverse the effects of climate change. We need our world leaders and the youth that are interested in changing the damage we're doing to the earth in order to make it better. We are still on time to fix this issue and we need your help. Without you, we cannot do it. Together, we are more powerful and we can fix this issue if we get it done on time. Please, let's give a future to the next generations and let's take care of our planet. The climate is changing, so we must change with it. This is the moment that we must stop saying empty words and finally do something about it. Monsieur le Président, vous saviez bien que le net zéro 2050, c'est l'enfer pour l'Afrique. Quelles que soient les promesses que vous allez offrir à nos dirigeants africains, quelle que soit l'aide, quel que soit l'argent que vous allez donner à l'Afrique, rien ne changera. Car la seule chose susceptible de changer les choses, c'est d'agir pour le climat. C'est maintenant que notre planète est en feu. Et nous ne pouvons pas attendre jusqu'en 2050 avant d'éteindre le feu. Les pays riches doivent une dette aux pays pauvres. Tous les pays riches et industrialisés. Eux, la dette que vous devez aux pays pauvres, ce n'est pas de l'argent. C'est une dette de sang que vous ne pouvez jamais payer. Alors, agissez maintenant pour le climat. Day after day, the climate crisis gets worse and worse, affecting every continent on this earth. The most affected and vulnerable areas having to pay the heavy price and experience the worst impacts of climate change. In all this, little action is ever seen. Empty promises is just a common thing. People are dying because of climate change. All sorts of climate disasters hitting communities and people. We need to see action. This is the reality of the climate crisis. Areas devastated by floods, typhoons, cyclones, fires, droughts, and so much more. We need action and we need true leadership in the face of all of this. We need you to listen to scientists and most affected people and areas. Staying below 1.5 degrees will not happen overnight, and nor will any empty promises fix that. Whatever decisions are made, for every country excluded, you will still hear our voices, calling for climate justice in action. We will not sit here and see our today and future destroyed. Desde pequeña y hasta ahora he escuchado hablar a los líderes mundiales que debemos luchar a hacer algo por el cambio climático 
que en estos momentos estamos sufriendo. Cada día observamos cómo los países del globo norte siguen llegando a los países del globo sur a causar una gran contaminación, la cual provoca a los países del globo sur grandes desastres. Esto ha provocado una separación de los globos por la crisis climática. El cambio climático no ve fronteras, no ve si eres rico o pobre, si eres buena o mala persona, no ve si eres grande o pequeño. El cambio climático acaba con todo, con todo lo que conocemos. A esto tendríamos que llamarlo un desafío global urgente, el cual requiere que todos nos unamos en una sola voz y no seguir permitiendo que las promesas y palabras de los gobernantes a nivel mundial no se cumplan. Yo les pregunto a los líderes en este momento, ¿qué esperan para tomar acciones? ¿O esperan ver que esto nos perjudique más hasta llevarnos a la destrucción total? Humanity is about the sixth mass extinction from our planet, from the history of our planet, and we need to stop that. And the main reason for this extinction would be the climate change, the climate crisis which we created right now. Some solutions are very useful for us. We need to do systemic changes also. We need to think that this problem is a huge problem and we can't stop it with small steps. We need to do systemic changes. We need to change the society, the economy, because the profit is over the nature right now in our economy. The thinking in our society and of the, and the people's thinking about this topic We need to do a just transition in the energy sector. And also we need to think that we need to repair everything which we destroyed in the past until now. These people are getting to me. Holy cow! I cannot believe these things aren't usually said during summits. Let's hear the next speech! In the modern world, it is inevitable for humans to have access to some form of energy. However, most of the energy that we're utilizing right now comes from sources that produce greenhouse gases, causing the world to heat up at an alarming rate. As a representative of Myanmar, I would like to emphasize the importance of developed countries to help bring the entire world in transitioning to renewable, clean energy sources with their available technology and funds. With cars spitting out exhaust and factories blowing out clouds of smoke from their generators, it is not hard to imagine the amount of harmful gases that are released into the atmosphere in a small country like Myanmar alone. Even though there have been efforts to transitioning to a less destructive form of energy source, the change is little in comparison to the damage done. Thus, I strongly urge world leaders to join hands in taking collaborative actions toward the transition to clean energy sources and help small underdeveloped countries such as Myanmar overcome this growing problem that climate change imposes. Only when a full transition is made to clean energy sources will we, as a world, have access to sources that can power our ever-growing need for energy while sustaining the environment that we live in. Our actual leaders, indigenous peoples and activists around the world will always say that all climate summits are a waste of time if MAPA countries are left out. The climate crisis is an existential crisis and humanity needs change now. Like now, our world leaders, like our presidents, are hypocritical and are not committed enough to implement what is needed. They should say all the mistakes and fallacies they've made, and they should stop subsidizing the fossil fuel industry. The climate crisis is killing us all. It's killing all the ecosystems and all life on the planet. That's why we need world leaders that care for inclusivity and transparency. They should use their power to stop all the industries that are destroying our existence. No more empty promises. World leaders sit around at summits and talk. But leaders of the climate movement would stand up and take action. This is a crisis, so we need to treat it like a crisis. We are fighting for every fraction of a degree because climate change is devastating MAPA countries already, but Ireland is an island. We're likely to experience flooding to an unimaginable extent, if not submerged entirely. We're losing the biodiversity that can save us and the frequency of storms is ramping up. We cannot deny that climate change is now. Stop talking, start acting. It's time for climate justice. The Biden and Harris administration need to commit and pledge to climate finance. This means taking responsibility for their contribution towards the climate crisis and taking responsibility for the loss and damages that is happening, especially in the global south. Net zero is not zero emissions. 
we have to stop hiding behind the term net zero. If our government and fossil fuel industries are ready to take on genuine action, prioritizing people and the planet before profit, then let's start the race towards zero and negative emissions. And carbon colonialism. Carbon offsets will not save us from the climate crisis. The forests in my country, in the global south, is not the place for the global north to hide their emissions. Our government keeps telling us that the UK is a climate leader, that we are doing everything necessary to fight the climate crisis, that we have started the first ever green revolution. But we know better. Our government must guarantee significant and binding reductions in CO2 emissions by divesting in fossil fuels and investing in renewables. We must hold companies accountable for inhumane and unequal practices, ensuring workers and the planet aren't abused or taken advantage of. There must be climate reparations, equity in climate solutions, an action that accounts for marginalised communities and the most vulnerable so that they will not be left behind by climate policies. We need climate justice. No more vague net zero targets that simply pass the issue on to the next generation. The crisis is happening right now. People are already being disproportionately impacted. Now is the time to act. We are running out of time. The climate crisis is a now issue. It's not an 10 years issue when everything has gone into dust and our future has been compromised. We need to see tangible actions now, not in a couple of years when it's too late. And we need to prioritize indigenous communities and frontline communities because they are the most at risk. And for once, make use of our privilege to help those most affected in order to ensure a just transition, socially and economically speaking. Also, can we stop making excuses about not having enough research or resources? Because we have the proof. And it's a waste of time to keep denying what's right in front of us. We cannot delay this any longer. Our future is at risk, and we're not gonna stay silent until we're hit with another typhoon or until we witness another burning forest. We've seen that, we need to fix it, not wait for it to happen again. World leaders, as of today, we should banish all new fossil fuel projects and pipelines. We need to clean up the existing spills. We, as of today, we choose lives over profits. We choose to prevent a holocaust that is about to happen onto indigenous people globally. We are witnessing the destruction of the most pristine ecosystems in the name of fossil fuels. And therefore today, we choose lives. No more ecocide, no more genocide, no more holocaust, but life. So true. <laughs> On with the show. Kuwait has experienced 1.5 degrees centigrade to 2 degrees centigrade rise in temperature, which is significantly higher than the global average. An increase in sandstorm, irregular pattern of rainfall, submersion of outlying island due to rise in sea level are the few effects we have first-hand witnessed. But we're going to face far more worse effects due to climate change from floods, droughts, depletion of aquifers, swear sandstorms, rise in temperature, and desertification. So I want to call out my leaders who have not done any major re reform to reduce the greenhouse gas emission of the country. Kuwait's economy being heavily based on, car on petroleum, carbon emission of the country are very high. A national plan to shift to low carbon economy is required. Political leaders all around the world still think we are clueless about their real interests. We know, and we want them to know, we know. In the global north, environmental policies keep greenwashing, extractivism and neocolonialism, while the supposedly leaders from the third world just watch them doing so. Actually, they help them, not only by corruption, but also by the usual normal rules from economics and geopolitics. Climate crisis is nothing more than the consequences of a system that exploited the land and people for hundreds of years. Those same political leaders that felt so comfortable doing that will not change with kind petitions. 
We need climate action to stop the bullshit. And we will do exactly that. 40 great leaders from around the world will be on the Climate Change Summit hosted by Joe Biden, the President of the United States of America, one of the greatest polluters in the world. The reflection that we must do now is, how are we supposed to stop global warming? How are we supposed to get the climate justice that we want if the people, the men that are in charge of making the big decisions, of making the, the big policies are the same that support fossil fuel projects, anti-sustainable transport projects and a huge etc. The answer to this problem is to go and speak and learn from the people of the most affected areas. The people who have been suffering from our continuous consumption and our continuous pollution for lots of years. We have to apply real policies that stop the systematic problems that have been making along the history. Climate change is an impending crisis that requires a global effort to mitigate and thus we need to ensure continued collaboration with the world. But some of our current emission reduction targets and energy plans are not compatible to the warming limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius. If the trend continues, emissions will only rise by 2030. We need to transition to green systems and adopt a One Health approach and introduce convival conservation. We need policies that will influence all the sectors of the economy, from healthcare sector to education sector to financial sector and so on. 1.5 degrees Celsius is possible. Let us fight for that. Mais uma vez, os líderes do movimento climático vão sentar-se a uma mesa para vomitar promessas vazias e datas muito longe para a resolução do problema do planeta Terra, o lugar aonde nós pertencemos. A crise climática é real e devemos combatê-la agora. Devemos lutar numa escala sem precedentes para que a mudança seja feita. A sociedade deve mudar a sua forma de pensar e a sua forma de fazer as coisas. Devemos reaprender e trabalhar seriamente na luta do mundo em que queremos. Ninguém vai fazer isso por nós. Temos que agir agora. Ação climática, justiça climática é igual à justiça social. Nosso problema é real e muito sério. Então vem mudar esta merda para mim. Today we are on a planetary emergency and climate crisis is dispensing enormous challenges to the planet. Already existing global fragilities have been exacerbated further by the ongoing climate crisis. It is time we declare climate emergency globally, countries to take decisive and collective attention in responding in mitigation of climate crisis. We young people, our future is being reimagined and that's why we are at the forefront on confrontation of global challenges and climate crisis. Climate crisis already amounted global fragility that needs collective attention from people from all walks of lives to join the ambition in mitigation. Science can no longer be taken for granted and we demand action to be taken. We want an end in fossil fuel because green energy is going to help us in renewing our communities and building more resilient communities. It's time now we act now for climate justice. The earth is burning. And it will continue to burn if we don't fight for 1.5. We are losing our biodiversity. The world is being polluted by plastic. My name is Joyce Koesh from Kenya. One of the countries mostly affected by climate change. We are facing frequent droughts and floods and the rise of the sea levels. Plastic menace is exasperating the climate emergency. Mr. President Joe Biden, we know that climate change sits high on your diplomatic agenda with Kenya and we hope that the trade deals between the two countries will serve to protect the environment and the people impacted by climate change. Eto, Sekai no Kagaksha Nadoa, Nihon no NDC ga saite demo, Nokujuni percent ni naranai to ikenai to yuarete no desga, Nima Nihon no sefua, NDC o yonju go kara go ju percent ni suru ho shin de, hanashiate imas. Sara ni, Honto wa, a Kayoko Hatsuden Shoto. 原発がゼロになるべきなのに、日本は新しい火力発電所を作っているし、原発のパーセンテージも上げようとしています。We 
demand acceleration of solution to the climate crisis. We emphasize and strictly recommend there has to be urgent climate action. We are witnessing a global climate change that had had devastating effect on our environment. Frequent flooding, most slides that kill hundreds of people in Sierra Leone, excessive heat at night, unemployment due to threats in the hands of climate change. A climate refugee leading young girls into prostitution. This is really terrible. Therefore, we say no more empty pro promises. We demand acceleration of solution to the climate to the climate justice. Therefore, we want climate action now. What do we want? Climate action. What do we want it? Now. Uh, was that the end? I guess so. Well, everyone, now you've heard the truth. I must say that was the most interesting and down to earth summit I've ever moderated. I wonder why we don't do more summits this way. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone.